This is a clip from the Canon Podcast. To hear the full episode and get access to exclusive benefits, head over to patreon.com forward slash the Canon Pod and sign up for just £3 a month. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that now. Tactical evolution, as you say, that Arsenal could make this you know, next season and what that might be, George, in terms of what is the next step in the system to take it to the next level, you know, we, Alex mentioned that the whole, you know, four four two Man City, and I, I saw this comparison on Twitter that maybe Havertz could be our type of Julian Alvarez type of player, the striker behind the striker that we have right now. But of course, we don't have that Erling Haaland goal scorer type of profile, George. So, what do you think in terms of Arsenal's next tactical um, evolution? I kind of alluded to it. I think Havertz dictates a lot of what you would maybe do. I mean, for me personally, I've always felt that we could see us attacking with potentially six channels. I've been alluding to that quite a bit. We've seen instances of that in the last preseason and committing more bodies forward. Now, I don't think Kai Havertz is the best um, player to support that type of system. Um, You know, I think with that, you would see a lot more of what City used at Inter Milan, which was like this kind of uh, 3-2 kind of, you know, 4-1 type of formation, which is essentially where I see Kai Havertz thriving in, right? Like you're going to have this kind of 3-2 buildup, one of them being an inverted fullback, and then you're going to have kind of a Kai Havertz that's going to play off of a Holland type of striker. And the only issue I have, though, is you're basically asking Bernardo Silva role to be Martin Odegaard's role, right? Like when Bernardo Silva was coming a little bit deeper at times into the pivot, you're going to be asking Martin Odegaard to perform some of those actions. And the one question I have is every time that we've seen sample of Martin Odegaard defending deep in a pivot, Palace, Gallagher, who won that battle? I'm not too sure. Uh, when you look at Liverpool in terms of how we lost that game, that inside channel between Martin Odegaard and Thomas Partey, Thiago Alcantara ripped us apart in that channel. So um, I am skeptical of moving Martin Odegaard deeper than what we would want to to accommodate a Kai Havertz. Um, I think tactically, to evolve, we would have to change to a diamond. It is really what I see as the most critical piece to accommodate a Kai Havertz, because that way you don't put Martin Odegaard in a pivot, and you don't put Kai Havertz in a pivot. You defend essentially in this kind of Christmas tree mold with a V in the midfield, and instead of defending in a 4-4-2 block, you're defending a lot more with three. Now, that is a big change, because all of last season we've defended in a 4-4-2 block. Um... And for me, a 4-4-2 defensive formation is the best formation defensively. And why do I say this? It's the, it's the one formation that lowers distances the most for players. It cuts passing lanes the most, and it makes it the most difficult for teams to play through. And so my biggest question mark would be if Kai Havertz was to actually make a move to the Emirates. I think that my tactical ideas of the team would shift quite clearly. It would be a lot more to the 3-4-3 defending and you would see a 4-3-3 block a lot more as a defensive block, much more in Man City mold. However, if we weren't to do a Kai Havertz and we were to do a little bit more of a Caicedo, which is still an option, by the way, and, you know, a Romeo Lavia, like, how do they fit in, by the way, you know, into this? You know, those 6-8 molds, they lend towards more of this kind of 2-2-6 that I've always predicted in a box where you kind of have these four monsters that are transition control. And you let the top six to do whatever they want to do. Now, Kai Havertz could definitely fit that mold as the roaming attacking midfielder. But then I'd ask you, what would happen to Martin Odegaard, Emile Smith-Rowe, who is also forcibly told to stay? Like, those are roles that I think all three can do. And it just seems like a little bit of redundancy right now. So uh, I'm open. I think those are the two options if I was to put my prediction hat on about what way Arsenal would go to. And a lot depends on whether or not Kai Havertz actually gets achieved, which is still something that I'm not, despite links, I'm not 100% convinced that Kai Havertz is coming. Um, Very possibly he could, and if he was, I think we go to a diamond. But if he doesn't come, I think we kind of just evolve a lot of what the system we've seen this past season by just adding another player to attack more uh, consistently. Thanks for checking out the Canon Podcast. To get full episodes and access to exclusive benefits, head over to patreon.com forward slash the Canon Pod and sign up for just £3 a month.